In today's video I'm gonna show you how to create that interactive menu. But before we begin I recently opened up the store which is called the editing shift and there you will find plenty of video editing assets to improve your workflow and at the same time bump up the quality of your videos. So if you want to take your editing game on another level you can check out the description below. So with that said we're gonna get straight into After Effects. And right off the bat we're gonna head over to the rectangle tool and we're gonna create a shape. Something like that should be fine. I'm gonna center it. I'm gonna right away show you something that makes a lot of difference which is basically going to layer styles and adding inner shadow. This is a complete game changer especially when you adjust the settings. So for example here I got a shadow going from the left but I kind of want to have it all over the place. So all I need to do is change the distance to zero and then bump up the size and you can see that kind of vignette look and you can literally apply inner shadow to everything like shapes, text, photos or whatever else. And we're gonna have a perfect opportunity to do so because I'm going to create the text. I'm gonna type in lesson one then let's adjust the font size. Let's swap the stroke with the fill. Let's recenter it and now we're going to right click go to layer styles inner shadow and here we're not gonna set the distance to zero because I kind of want to have it from the left but we're gonna change it to 2.5 it's much better I'm just thinking maybe let's add another color I think something like gray could work here perfectly fine then we need to create an animation for the rectangle so for this we need to keyframe size and in order to see the size we need to head over to the window then look for properties now we're gonna hit the stopwatch for size and then we're gonna uncheck constraint properties now I'm gonna move that keyframe forward and we're gonna change x size to zero Let's select these two, right click, go to keyframe assistant, easy ease. Now with them selected, we're gonna head over to the graph editor and we're going to create a peak on the left. Let's adjust the tempo. Okay, I like it. Now I'm gonna duplicate that layer. I'm gonna call it cover. Now we're gonna move over to the modes and we're gonna change the track mat in our lesson one to the cover. And that way the shape is going to reveal the text. Now we got already our first part, so we need to create the second one. So for this, I'm gonna click the lesson one, hold shift and click shape layer one. I'm gonna hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V. And now I can pre-compose the first three layers. Let's hit OK. We can rename it to bar one. And then here in the text, we're going to change it to two. We could have actually used the left paragraph, but I'm just gonna adjust it manually. Now it should be all good. I'm gonna do the same thing two more times. So duplicate, then pre-compose, close bar two. Then we're gonna rename it to three and we're gonna duplicate it one more time. Then pre-compose, close bar three. And here change the number to four and i'm gonna pre-compose it for the last time and actually change the name now we're gonna head over to the bar two and drag it downwards just like that do the same for the third one and also for the fourth one you can adjust the position with the arrow keys so i'm just gonna do some adjustments now we want to open up bars one by one so i'm just gonna offset the layers so let me go somewhere here i think three frames should be all right so we're just gonna do it like that Perfect. And now we need the mouse pointer. Just look for something similar on the internet. You can type in mouse pointer or something like that. And then I'm just gonna trim that layer to one frame. I'm gonna double click it, go to the roto brush tool, and we're just gonna select it. I'm gonna probably make an adjustment over here. There are probably mouse pointers with the transparent background, but I haven't found one. So we're just gonna do it manually. Okay, I'm gonna hit freeze, go back to our main window, and we could also shift edge a little bit to minus 20. Now it should be perfectly fine. But we only got it for one frame, so we're gonna pre-compose it. And then make sure to select that circle, hit OK. Right click again, time, freeze frame. We could actually change it for a different color. I'm gonna actually scale it down a little bit and move the layer to the very beginning. Let's put the mouse pointer somewhere here. I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard, create a keyframe for position, and also hold Shift click R and add the keyframe for rotation. Actually, we're gonna set the starting position from somewhere here. Okay, let's move here and we're gonna create another keyframe for position that goes somewhere here. We're gonna adjust the starting rotation to like 50 degrees, maybe 60. And then we're gonna change it to, let's say, minus 10. I feel like we need to change the starting position. Maybe somewhere here will be better, we'll see. Now let's select all the keyframes, easy ease them, and we're gonna move over to the graph editor and we're gonna create the peak on the left. Now we need to extend these keyframes we kind of want to make this movement subtle. Gonna move it backwards and we're gonna also fade in that pointer. So I'm gonna set the keyframe for opacity and then somewhere at the beginning we're gonna change it to zero. Okay, that's perfect. Now we're gonna create a new null object and we're gonna call it pointer controller and then we're gonna go back to the switches and we're gonna parent our pointer to the pointer controller. Now we kind of want to remain the movement like I explained in one of the previous episodes. So here we're gonna create a keyframe for position and at the same time for rotation. Now let's move somewhere here and we're gonna move upwards with the pointer to the first lesson and we're gonna adjust the rotation. Okay, so we get something like that right now. Now I'm gonna select all these keyframes, move them forward and we're gonna easy ease them and we're gonna use the mid graph. Let me show you. So that's the graph. 
Okay, it seems perfect right now. Now we need to make the pointer act like it's clicking on the lesson one. So for this, we're gonna create a keyframe for scale in our mouse here. Then we're gonna move forward a couple of frames and we're gonna decrease the scale. So it's kind of clicking. Then we're gonna copy that keyframe and paste it somewhere here. We could also easy use the keyframes. And we also wanna do it for the bar one. So we kinda wanna push it in and then out. So I'm gonna align the time indicator with the first keyframe. Then I'm gonna press Alt Shift C. Now move to the middle here and we're gonna push it in by decreasing the scale. Something like that should be fine. Then move over to the last keyframe, copy the first one over here and paste it. We can also easy use the keyframes. So if we play it back, we get a nice interaction. And now what we need to do is make the pointer interact with each of the lessons. So for this, we're gonna add the effect exposure to each of the bars. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna start off with the first one. So I'm just gonna hit the stopwatch for exposure. Hit U on the keyboard and make sure when the pointer is on the lesson one, we wanna lower the amount for the exposure. So we're gonna go with something like maybe minus two. Okay, so look at that right now. It's a bit too early, so we need to adjust the keyframes. And now we're gonna go back with that opacity. So I'm gonna copy that keyframe and paste it somewhere here. Now we need to do the same thing for the bar two. So I'm gonna copy these keyframes and paste them somewhere here. Let's hit you. And here the pointer is kind of slowing down. So we need to make an adjustment. I'm gonna extend that keyframe and I'm gonna copy the one in the middle and paste it here. I feel like we could go back by one keyframe and we're gonna copy all the keyframes and do the same procedure. I'm gonna hit you. Okay, and here it's slowing down even more. So we need to extend it. Okay, and one last bar, we're just gonna copy these keyframes and paste them here. Okay, it's too early. We're gonna extend these keyframes because the pointer stays there for a bit longer. And now we're moving back to the lesson three. So we need to copy that set of keyframes and paste it somewhere here. Okay, let's adjust even more. It's pretty fast here. We're gonna copy that set of keyframe now, paste it here. And we're gonna copy the set of keyframe from the first one, paste it here. And we're gonna actually extend that keyframe, copy the one in the middle, and paste that one here. We can actually delete the last two keyframes because the pointer stays on the lesson one. So now it perfectly interacts. Maybe I would just offset it by one frame over here. Yeah, it's a bit better now. And something that would make a lot of sense here is whenever you click on the lesson one or whatever you got there, then you're gonna apply a transition and move over to another scene. All right, so that's the final outcome. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe because I'm currently posting daily. We'll see for how long, but thank you for being a part of this channel and I will see you in the next one. Cheers guys.